Hi there, welcome to today's webinar. We're so excited to have our strategic partner, partner Cisco, um, present today on 5G IoT security. We have Praveena here, and I'm going to have her introduce herself in just a moment. But before that, my name is Lynn Dome, and I'm Women in Cybersecurity Executive Director. We often go by our acronym WICYS, W-I-C-Y-S, as in we sis, like we sisters, because that's exactly what we are. We're a cyber sisterhood. So just a little bit of information on the WeSys organization. We're a full C3 member based nonprofit. We have over 5,000 members and have representation in over 70 countries. Our mission is to recruit, retain, and advance women in cybersecurity. And we do so by creating opportunities. So we are a member-based organization, and naturally, we have an online member forum. Within the member forum, all our net members can network and connect with each other and even launch special interest groups. So we have intro group, interest groups like data privacy or cybersecurity law or neurodiversity in cybersecurity or Latinas in cybersecurity. So you name it, our members could either join their own special interest group or launch their own special interest group. We also have many different skill development training programs. We have the Security Training Scholarship made possible by Google, Bloomberg, and Facebook. AWS builds out a roadmap for us. We also have Target Funds, Gamified Cybersecurity Challenges, and many, many more opportunities for all our members. We have newsletters and webinar series, such as the one that you're watching today. And we also issue scholarships, grants, and awards to our annual conference. We just had our WESIS 2021 conference, but we have our WESIS 2022 conference coming up March 17th through the 19th. And actually, all the applications for the scholarships, grants, awards, and call for participation just opened up yesterday. So if you have a chance, go to WESIS.org and check out the 2022 conference and uh, join us there. We have our Cyber Talent Emergency Fund, where our members within their last four semesters of completing their education can apply to receive up to $599 within 48 hours of submitting. That's for true financial emergencies, like they can't afford ele their electricity or, or they have a medical expense that they can't afford or their car breaks down. Things that normally would take students out of the mindset of um, studying and preparing for their cybersecurity career, we help the, assist them with that financial support. We have speaking and media opportunities. We want our members to be what others can see and be known as the cybersecurity professionals that they are. Our Job Board Plus Plus is a place for all our strategic partners, um, including Cisco, uh, to, to upload um, their job postings and also recruit from our resume database. All our members have the opportunity to have a profile and upload their resumes in that job board plus plus as well to be recruited from. We have a veterans apprenticeship program. We have a WESIS internship program and many other um, opportunities for those to get hired and employed within our organization. We provide market research, we have leadership summits. We also have a veteran and military spouse program. We have a veterans apprenticeship program that I already spoke about. We have a speakers bureau, a mentor mentee program. We launched that last year and had 707 mentees, 185 mentors. And we just closed down the application for 2021. And we had over a thousand WESIS members enroll in the mentor mentee program again. So it's a fabulous co I really recommend you checking it out on the website. We have a racial equity committee, professional, 38 professional affiliates across Africa, Australia, Canada, France, India, Pakistan, the UK, and throughout the United States, and 127 student chapters in Canada, Costa Rica, India, Nigeria, and all throughout the United States as well. And we owe all that as a special thanks to our strategic partners. They are the foundation of all things WESIS. And that's AWS Bloomberg, Carnegie Mellon Software Engineering Institute, Cisco, which brings us the webinar today. We have Facebook, Google, Lockheed Martin, Microsoft, Optum, AbbVie, JP Morgan, Chase & Company, LinkedIn, Navy Federal Credit Union, Nike, Sentinel One, Wayfair, Workday, Accenture, American Airlines, Arctic Wolf, Dell Technologies, InvestNet, Flatiron, Fortinet, Haystack Solutions, Here Technologies, The Home Depot, IBM, Indiana University, MITRE, Motorola Solutions, Oak Ridge National Lab, Palo Alto Network, Salesforce, Sands Institute, SAP, SmoothStack, Speartip, Starbucks, Target, 
University of California, San Diego, and Verizon. Whew, it is a mouthful, that's for sure. We had three more new strategic partners that just came in last week, so we'll be adding those to our image shortly too. But I wanted to let you all know that here we have this a fabulous expert, Praveena, here on behalf of and representing the Cisco company um, that is a strong strategic partner of ours and has been the supporter for a very long time. She's going to be presenting on 5G IoT security. So this is your opportunity as an audience to be able to connect and collaborate with Praveena and ask her any questions you may have. So at the bottom of your screen, you have that chat box to ask these questions. Please put them in there. And Provina will um, be able, sure to answer those at the end of the presentation. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our newsletter. You could also find us on Facebook or Facebook group. We have LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Instagram. So you name it, we're out there. And that's the quickest, easiest, fastest way for you to stay and continue to stay connected of all things within the WESIS org. So without further ado, I'd like to hand the mic over to Praveena for her to take the program away from here. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. This is Praveena Sridhar. I'm from uh, Cisco Systems. I'm with Cisco for 11 plus years. And prior to Cisco, I have another 10 years. I've uh, worked with uh, various organizations, uh, including Microsoft, BA, BMC, and Intuit. And, uh, uh, currently, today I'm going to talk about uh, 5G IoT security. I've been in the IoT space for uh, more than a decade and uh, uh, we work on 5G systems. So thought I would present something related to uh, the 5G security at a very high level for mostly for beginners and uh, intermediate level people so that they get a feel of what exactly happens in 5G. Yeah. So I need to click on slides uh, or... Uh, okay. So welcome to the uh, webinar. Uh, this is about 5G IoT security. Yeah, so the agenda, we are going to cover advantages of 5G, IoT use cases, core architectures of 5G, the components, uh, RAN deployment, uh, 5G security, and uh, some of the security algorithms. We're also going to cover the encryption algorithms, the key, key hierarchy, authentication and key agreement and uh, key distribution and uh, you know multiple three levels of security and also security associations so let's start off so what are the advantages of 5g so typical cellular networks right you can have a uh, they have a massive range but they are limited to only 4000 devices per square kilometer but 5g can handle million devices per square kilometer which uh, help to facilitate a smart, a smart city full of iot devices so in terms of uh, the number of devices supported 5g has got a, a very huge uh, advantage over the 4G and the previous ones. And uh, if you're actually thinking about a pandemic, I mean, the current situation where we are in, where we want doctors to be able to operate on something using a remotely controlled robo, right? You know, uh, with absolutely no latency at all, I think 5G is something that we can look forward to. And the old uh, communications like the 4G and the LTE, they have a latency of 20 to 30 milliseconds, but uh, 5G is uh, less than 10 milliseconds and uh, where most uh, communications will likely hover around one millisecond. So that's the biggest advantage 5G has over the remaining one in terms of uh, scale and also in terms of latency. So let's move on to the next one. And what are the 5G IoT use cases? So we have multiple use cases in terms of uh, residential, uh, smart homes. We have we can have it in university campuses. We can have it in enterprises, like in a military organization. You can use it in a hospital to have connected devices. You can use it in a university. You can use it for military purpose. I mean, you can use it in some mission critical systems. I mean, there are so many use cases of 5G just because, I mean, you know, it is private and then you can have it in a, in a limited uh, range of, uh, 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 system instead of having it uh, like a, a broadband, uh, you know, uh, like a mobile service provider. So we can use it in automation, like in an industry automation. We can use it for sensors, AR, VR, and we can use it in robotics. The next one is again the IoT use cases, right? So we can use it in uh, vehicle to vehicle communication, smart parking. And we can use for smart CCTVs um, and water quality meters, smart wearables. You know, the, the use cases are many. So we can use it for uh, remote control of factory robots uh, within, within, a, within a particular factory and smart grids 
and uh, you know you can you, you also use it for new generation drone capabilities and also for utility management and domotics is the smart homes so the use cases for the 5g iot are many just like we have for 4g except that 5g is uh, much more advanced in terms of uh, uh, you know its its speed and also in terms of the number of devices it supports Let's move on, moving on, yeah. So what constitutes a, a typical 5G core architecture at a 10,000 feet high level? So one is the user equipment. This can be any devices that leverages the 5G system. Examples include cell phones, vehicles, 5G IoT. I mean, it can be anything which has that SIM. And you have the radio access network. It is a gateway used to access the 5G network. And RAN is a series of multiple base stations and supporting infrastructure that act as an intermediary between the user equipment and the core network. So now this is again, I'm, I'm uh, talking at a very high level for people who, who want to know what exactly it is. This is not um, to for you to get a clarity and have a, in simple terms in terms of what it is. And then we have the core network. This is where all the processing occurs within 5G. The system is entirely virtualized in the cloud. So this, this guy is the, the actual core guy who does the entire processing. The two other things are user equipment and the radio access network. Now moving on to the next one. So we have 5G components. There are multiple components in 5G. Uh, so we have AMF, SMF, AUSF. So let, let, us, let me go into depth. I think the slide font is a little low, but anyway, I'll, I'll try to cover. Yeah, AMF is uh, access and mobility function. This is the 5G core components. This is the one which you're talking about, the core components. This is not the RAN, not the UE. And uh, this one, it does the registration and connection management. And then coming on to... Uh, SMF, which is the session management function, this does the establishment, maintenance, release of any session management between the user equipment and the data network. Data network is the one which is not the RAM, you know, the one which you're actually talking about the core network. And IP ad address allocation, everything happens in the session management function, SMF. And then moving on to AUSF, authentication server function, provides authentication uh, services to AMF. So all the AMF related authentication is done by AUSF. And then this provides the master keys to the AMF. So we covered three functions. One is AMF, SMF, and AUSF. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, so now we have something called UDM. This is uh, Unified Data Management Application Frontend. Now this is the frontend guy. And then this guy holds a subscriber profile. And uh, he stores the SUPI, which is Subscription Permanent Identifier. And uh, the UDM UDR actually is the equivalent as the HSS in the 4G LTE space. And uh, UDR is a unified data repository. This is the actual repository which stores all the subscriber profile. UDM is just the front end which, which gives access to this particular UDR. And then we have UPF, which is a user plane function. This guy, this guy takes care of the ingress and the egress points for 5G core. Anyone who enters the 5G core or ex exits out of the 5G core and happens through the user plane function. And then we have the policy control function. The, all the policy related decision, any rules, anything that you want to regulate, I mean, that will be taken care by the policy decision function. So these are the seven things which you have. AMF, SMF, AUSF, UDM, UDR, UPF, and PCF, which are the 5G core components at a very, very high level. And then moving on. So if you look at uh, uh, 4G RAN deployment, so we have, uh, let's say we look at the 5G core network. We have a G node B, which is the uh, base station for the 5G network. And the standalone connection is any G node B connecting to 5G core is called a standalone. Now, let's say you have a new generation E node B, which is from the 4G space. Then if the G node B connects to the NG E node B and then back to the 5G core network, it is called a non-standalone. This is one kind of non-standalone. If you have a 4G network and then the ENG node B uh, connecting to an uh, E node B connecting to 4G packet core, this is again non-standalone. For the, um, the discussion of this webinar, we are going to discuss mostly about the standalone, uh, the G node B to 5G uh, core network. All I wanted to give you is an indication of uh, the other channels possible. Uh, for non-standalone uh, to connect to the 5G network. Then moving on. So in 5G, we have this RAN sharing. Now you can have RAN sharing at, uh, you know, uh, so if you look at public 5G network, which is a mobile service provider network, where you have a UPF, G node B, and a control plane. And I also have a private network, private 5G network, where I have a G node B, UPF, and a... Uh, control plane. So here, what happens is we are sharing the RAN. When you, when you mean I'm sharing the RAN is the G node B. The G node B is actually shared across the public 5G network and the 
uh, private 5G network. This is one of a deployment where uh, RAN resources with the uh, NPN retires the core control and user plane, but shares the RAN resources with the public 5G network. Then moving on to the next one, another kind of deployment where you have the RAN and the core sharing. So if you look at it, the UPF uh, is also, uh, GNODE B is there, the control plane uh, SBA is also there. And uh, so we are sharing both the RAN and the core. The control plane uh, sharing is happening with the public 5G network. So NPN retains the user plane access to NPN services, but shares RAN and core uh, resources with the public 5G network. And the UPF alone remains with the uh, private 5G network. The ingress and the egress uh, point, which makes a call to the uh, data network, that alone remains with the 5G. The remaining all is all shared with the uh, other one. So this is another kind of deployment. There is a third kind of deployment where you are actually hosting it inside the private 5G. So um, the non-public network is hosted by the public network in its entirety, possible as a network slice. So uh so g the g node b the upf i mean everything is staying stay i mean you know it is inside the public network itself so uh you're hosting it inside so this is the third kind of uh, uh, uh hosting or a deployment which is possible moving on to 5g security so we have uh, uh you know as we already discussed we have a user plane we have a base station and we have the core network which you see to the right side and then we are talking about uh, three different securities one is rrc signaling one is nas signaling and one is the user plane the user plane is between the user equipment and the g node b as the uh, figure points out and uh, uh, the one the the what is it? The NAS signaling is between the user equipment and the AMF. It's a data, data network. And the RRC, it's for the confidentiality and integrity protection. We have a connection between uh, user plane and the G node. The, this one. So there are two planes there. And then moving on to the next one. So we have network function selection. So if you look at who selects what in terms of uh, uh, the seven components, uh, G node B uh, does the AMF selection. And the AMF does the AUSF selection. AMF and SMF does the PCF selection, the policy control. And SMF selection is done by uh, AMF. And UPF selection is done by SMF. So as we already discussed, you know, AMF is meant for access and mobility. G node B is actually base station. So we have a flow here in terms of which network uh, function selects which other network function inside the 5G network. And uh, I mean, the, the, this is the entire network function selection process. Then moving on to the next one. Yeah. So if you look at the 5G security algorithms, right? In general, we have an MZ, right? Mm, the mobile uh, MZ in any of the uh, uh, telephone network. And then it is called the subscription permanent identifier. And in 5G security, this SUPI cannot be plain sent in plain text. It needs to be encrypted. So when we go to the next one, the SUPI should not be sent in clear text across the 5G RAN. So we use an asymmetric encryption algorithm with a home network public key, and then we generate SUCI, which is uh, uh, it's a concealed identity. And uh, SUCI is, is the one which will stay inside the UDM. And then we use a subscriber identity deconcealing function to decrypt this particular uh, uh, SUCI to get the SUPI. So that SUPI is never sent in plain text. So this is the, uh, this is the protocol that we follow within the 5G. And then moving on to the next one. What are all the 5G encryption algorithms? So, uh, just like we have our regular encryption algorithm of you know diffie hellman aes or whatever we use in our regular networks or any of our uh, iot products i mean 5g expects you to use their system encryption algorithms like nea0 uh, for uh, ciphering algorithm 128 nea1 for the snow 3g algorithm 128 nea2 for 128-bit uh, aes standard and nea3 for Zhu Chongji algorithm. And these are used for encryption. So there are one set of algorithms which are used only for encrypting. And there is another set of new algorithms which are there for integrity, for integrity algorithms. That is uh, NIA0, 128 NIA1, NIA2, and NIA3. So NEA is meant for E. The E represents the encryption one. 
uh, and i represents the integrated related so there are new set of algorithms which need to be implemented I mean, there is no mandate but yeah it's uh, yeah uh, which are introduced in 5g for you to encrypt uh, for each of the transmissions then moving on to the next one yeah so we have these keys which are generated um, as part of the authentication vector uh, the and uh, so there is something called KAUSF. You know, this is derived as part of the 5G um, authentication vector generation. And then this um, uh, creates another, I mean, we, we generate another set of key called KSEF, which is derived at the AUSF. So we use multiple set of keys which are created within 5G, and then they are generated at different network points. So one is generated at 5G, which is KAUSF. And then we have KSEF, which is derived at the AUSF. And then we have KAMF, which is derived at the AMF. And then if you look at uh, the three planes that we talked about, the NAS, RRC, and the, uh, the third one, the user plane, for each of uh, the three, we have uh, encryption and integrity algorithms or in integrity uh, keys which are created. So if you look at K, NAS, ENC, that is the key which is created in the NAS plane for encryption. KNAS INT is the key created for integrity in the NAS plane. And KG node B is derived. I mean, all the three that you see here, KNAS encryption, KNAS integrity, and KG node B, they are derived at the AMF. And uh, the remaining things like the RRC encryption, RRC uh, integrity, uh, user plane encryption, and user plane integrity, they are derived at the G node B and the uh, user equipment, if you look at this respectively. So if you look at the next uh, screen, I think you'll get a full feel of what uh, I'll show you in the for the slides. So authentication and key management. So provides mutual, mutual authentication between the device and the network. Key agreement. Now, generation and distribution of any anchor key from which the security key is used to support, like RRC, NAS, and user plane are derived. This key agreement is uh, uh, what is part of the authentication and the key agreement is in the three planes yeah this is the key distribution which i was talking about so if you look at kusf and kseaf in the previous slides which we saw and if you look at this uh, these are created at 5g and ausf so yeah so the kusf and kesf yeah this is created at the ausf and then we have the kamf created over here um, at the amf side and then we have KNAS uh, encryption, NAS integrity, and KG node B, which is there at the EMF. So if you go back here, yeah, KNAS encryption, KNAS integrity, and KG G node B, these are derived at the EMF. At the AMF. And then we have six keys, one for NAS encryption, NAS integrity, RRC encryption, RRC integrity, user plane encryption, and user plane integrity. The user plane related ones are created at the UE. The RRC is created at the, the, the next one, you know, the, the RRC encryption and INT are created at the G node B while the NAS is created at the AMF. So there are different set of keys which are created at each network, you know, at each jun junction that you see over here for safely, uh, safely transmitting all the uh, data in the 5G network. And then uh, uh, the encryption algorithm, as I have already mentioned, uh, there are new set of encryption algorithms that we use, like uh, NEA, um, NEA 1234 for encryption, and NIA 1, um, sorry, uh, 123, 0123, and uh, NIA 12, so I'll, I'll go back. Uh, NEA and NIA 0123 and 0123 for encryption and integrity, respectively. And uh, yeah, and the keys are created at a different points in the in the 5G network at the multiple network functions. Yeah, so now coming to the NAS signaling security. Now this is the one which we talked about. This is the connection between the user equipment and the AMF. And then for here, uh, which is what we uh, talked about. The message will contain a key security uh, key set identifier, which assists the device in selecting the correct NAS security keys. So AMF will choose a spe uh, and specify both the ciphering and integrity algorithm. This is what I meant. A NEA2 or NIA2 or NEA3 or NIA3, the AMF will decide which algorithm that we uh, 
uh, send over here. In case of a registration, AMF will send the replayed uh, UE security capabilities. So the reason for this is to mitigate against uh, a man in the middle attack, where the uh, attacker exploits the fact that the registration request is not uh, integrity protected and hence downgrades the UE capabilities to assist with further exploitation. This is like a bidding down attack. So we ensure that the keys are created at the right uh, uh, points in the network so that uh, um, to ensure that there are no uh, MITM attacks in the NAS plane between UE and the AMF. Similarly, we have user plane security. User plane security is between uh, uh, the G node B and the uh, AMF. As I already discussed, all the UPF or the user plane thing is related to the ingress egress point into the data network, right? So it is between the G node B and the AMF. And even here, we have security keys related to KG, G node B. And uh, so for this one, the PDU session establishment will be protected uh, as the key messages. Uh, spanning the air interface will be subject to NAS security in terms of both encryption and, and integrity. However, during the establishment of PDU session, it is necessary to um, also set up the data uh, radio bearer. So the G node B will, will need to generate uh, the K user plane encryption and the user plane integrity keys in order to protect the data. These security keys are generated from the K G node B, which is transported to the G node B from the AMF. Um, and, uh, you know, the as the figure uh, shows, we have these keys flowing between the G node B and the AMF in the uh, user plane uh, uh, security uh, channel. So we have three. One is NAS, one is the plane, and one is the RRC. Now, moving on to the next one, which is the RRC security. This is uh, between the UE and the G node B. So RRC security mode message from the G node B to the device will contain the selected RRC security algorithms and is uh, integrity protected with KRRC um, INT. So if a device can verify the message by checking the MAC value, it will respond to the RRC security mode complete message. The message will also be um, integrity checked, so as well as ciphered. So what I mean by ciphered is, yeah, we have the encryption also enabled over there. Once the G node B has successfully verified and deciphered the uh, SMC, uh, the the message, integrity checking and ciphering for all future RRC messages can now be activated. So uh, now th these are the two keys that we have for RRC, uh, that is uh, KRRC, um, uh, encryption and KRRC INT, uh, two keys which are there between the UE and the, uh, the G node B. Moving on to the next one. Yeah. So, and the G node B security association. So, for 5G access network uh, elements of 5G system, uh, this will typically contain, you know, tens or even thousands of G node Bs, potentially even higher figures. Um, and uh, provisioning IPsec based connectivity to the 5G network for each of these G node Bs would be time consuming. And uh, that's why uh, we prefer having them going through a certificate authority. So the certificate is then used to be automated based on to provide authentication and uh, key material for the creation of IPsec security association within the 5G core. Uh, the concept, I mean, uh, as you see here, so we have a, a certificate is pre-installed by the vendor root, and then uh, it is uh, uh, vendor signed certificate of the G node B public key is uh, pre-installed uh, uh, at the G node B. And then uh, we have G node B obtains the service provider signed certificate on its own public key from CA using uh, um, at the, you know, this is again at the G node B, the, the second one between the G node B and the CA. And then uh, service provider root certificate used to authenticate response from CA. Then we have certificate provided by CA used in the IPsec tunnel uh, on the data network side. Service provider root certificate used to authenticate uh, certificate presented by GNODB. So we have multiple this uh, GNODB security associations where we uh, used a standard CA uh, certificate provider to get the certificate and then install it, uh, which is there at GNODB, which can further be used uh, within the data network uh, to send uh, data across for transmission. So I mean, I think 
that's all I have. And this is, thank you. So any questions? Yeah, so I see a question here. Do encryption and integrity algorithm have to be same revision, both on zero and three, for example, but not mixed? Uh, we could have different, we could. Yeah, so one uh, one question could be, you know, uh, related to, you know, um, why is it that uh, this is uh, way more important than the 4G thing? Um, is that, as I initially explained in terms of advantages, we have millions, I mean, th this can support a hell of a lot of devices when compared to the 4G that are within limited space. So security in this space is more concerning when compared to the uh, 4G because we have uh, 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 more devices and this can actually be used for mission critical systems because the latency is too less. Uh, I mean, we can literally have, it's like a real communication uh, because there is no latency, uh, like a, you know, um, operation being or a surgery being performed by a doctor using robo, which is what we talked about. So uh, security in this space is going to be really more critical than the regular one, just because of the latency and also because of the uh, the number of devices sub it supports and also the kind of use cases that we are working on, which is related to mission critical systems and can be, yeah, as I told, you know, we can have it in campus, we can have it in, uh, uh, industries, you can have it in factories, you can also have it in uh, uh, smart homes, it can be used in smart cities. So the kind of use cases that we are looking for is really uh, niche and they are really uh, tech savvy and then the kind of issues which could come for any security breach in the system is going to be more critical, which is why it makes the, the 5G security more, uh, we need to have more emphasis on this than the regular one. Uh, because of the use cases and the potential damage it can do to the uh, to the community or to the industries. Yeah. Yeah. So. So if you if you don't have any further questions, I think uh, the uh, I mean I'm at the end of the uh, my session. So it was great uh, talking to you on the five G security. Thank you.